Hey guys, I am Amit Kumar and welcome to this video in which we are going to talk about polymorphism. Polymorphism means one thing available in many forms. It is the ability of an object to take on many forms. There are two types of polymorphism, static polymorphism or early binding, dynamic polymorphism or late binding. Now static polymorphism is achieved with help of method overloading. Method overloading is the ability of a class to have more than one methods with same name. But these methods should have a different signature. There are three ways in which a method can have different signature. That is number of parameters, type of parameters, and order of parameters. So polymorphism means the same thing when it is available in many forms. There are two types of polymorphism, static and dynamic. For static polymorphism or method overloading, we can have more than one methods with same name but with different signature. Now if we talk about dynamic polymorphism, Apex provides two different ways for dynamic polymorphism or method overriding. It requires an Apex interface to be implemented or a class that can be extended by other Apex classes, example virtual or abstract class. So to implement dynamic polymorphism, we either have to implement Apex interface or we have to extend a virtual or an abstract class. The implementing or extending classes can then be used in a predictable, consistent way even though their types are different from one another. As we will not discuss abstract classes or interfaces now, let's see dynamic polymorphism in Apex with help of virtual class. The virtual definition modifier declares that this class allows extension and overrides. We cannot override a method with the override keyword unless the class has been defined as virtual. So with help of method overriding, what we can do is there would be a defined method available in virtual class and we are going to provide a new definition to already define us. Now with help of these subclasses, the same method can be defined differently and hence can be implemented differently. So it's pretty much of talk and now it's time to see the things practically. So guys, here we are on our developer console and let's create a program to see method overloading or static polymorphism. So guys, you can see here I have created five different methods with same name show. You can see that all the method is having the same name, but I have printed different statements in these methods. The interesting thing is all these methods are having different signature. So if we talk about the first two show methods, the signature is different due to number of parameters. There is no parameter in the first show method, but there is one parameter in the second show method. If we talk about the second and the third method, they are differentiated with help of type of parameter. So both the second and the third show method is having only one parameter, but the type is different. The second one is having one integer where the third one is having one decimal. Now, if we talk about the last two methods, both of them are having two parameters. Both of them are having integer and decimal as parameters, but here the signature is different due to order of parameter. If we talk about the fourth method, we are passing integer first and then a decimal. In the fifth method, we are passing a decimal first, then an integer. So let's see how to call these different methods of the same class with the same name. So guys, you can see here I've created another class polymorphism one in which I created this static run method and I have created object of method overloading class. Now I'm calling all those five different show methods and here you can see when I will not pass any parameter, the first one will be called, the second one will be called when I will pass an integer as parameter, the third one will be called when I will pass a decimal as parameter and hence when I will pass an integer first, the fourth one will be called and when I will call the decimal first, the fifth one will be called. 
so out of these five methods a specific method will be called according to the signature of the method so now let's run this program and you can see all those five different show methods or I should say all those five show methods with different signature are called here. Now let's see how to implement dynamic polymorphism. So guys you can see I have created a virtual class known as geometry in which I have created two different virtual methods. Now because these methods are virtual I can override them or I can provide a new definition to these methods in their subclass. So when I create a subclass of this geometry class I can certainly override this area method. Now here in this virtual class this area method is not doing anything it is accepting a decimal array as parameter and just printing a statement that I am a virtual area method of geometry class and then it's not even returning anything so it's returning null. The return type of this method is decimal. I have also created another perimeter method which is also virtual also returning decimal and also accepting a decimal array as parameter. It is also not doing anything other than printing a statement and returning null. Now the interesting thing is when I am going to inherit this geometry class. So I have created a circle class over here and inside this circle class I have inherited the geometry class and now because of that I have the capability to override those two methods inside the circle. Make sure to use the override keyword when we are overriding those methods. So here you can see I have overridden area method where I am accepting a decimal array as parameter. I am taking the first element of the array as radius and then calculating the area by the formula pi r square where pi is nothing but 3.14 and then doing the r square and that will be the area which I am going to return here. In the parameter method I am taking the first element as radius and here I am using the formula 2 pi r cal to calculate the parameter or circumference of the circle and then returning that value. I have also created a rectangle class which is also inheriting the geometry class and overriding the area and the parameter method. Now here we are taking the first two elements as length and breadth calculating the area as length multiplied by breadth and here in the perimeter calculating the perimeter with the formula 2 into L plus B. In the square class I have also extended geometry and here I am taking the first parameter as the side of the square and calculating the area of square by side square formula and with the help of formula 4 into side I am calculating the parameter. Now you can clearly see I have defined virtually I have virtually defined these methods in the virtual class and then each subclass is overriding the method according to their purpose. Now in case if I miss this override keyword let's see what happens. So if I will miss this override keyword while defining this area method it will show an error and you can see method must use the override keyword to override the area method. So it will it will understand that geometry class is having a virtual area method which you are redefining here but not using the override keyword. So that override keyword is must. And now let's see how the dynamic polymorphism is taking place. Now here you can see in the polymorphism 2 class I have created an object of geometry class geometry which is the base class or which is the parent class. So I have created a geometry class object over here or the parent class object over here. For the first time I am instantiating this object with the help of circle class by using the circle constructor. So now because I am instantiating this object with circle the area and the perimeter method of the circle class will be called here and hence it will calculate the area and perimeter of the circle. I am instantiating the same object again so definitely it will forget the previous instance and a new instance will be created but this time I am instantiating it with rectangle class. So now the area and perimeter method of the rectangle class will be called. And when I will instantiate the same object with square class then the area and the perimeter method of the square class will be called. Now this is completely possible we can create an object of the parent class and we can instantiate it with any of the subclass this is completely alright and because of that 
this is known as dynamic polymorphism because at the run time it is decided which method will be called according to the instance of the class now here i am doing one more change instead of passing 2.0 i am passing 3 because in that case area and perimeter would be same now let's calculate the area and perimeter of circle square and rectangle so let's run this program so this time I will call polymorphism 2.run and I will click on execute. Now you can see for the first time it is calculating area or in circumference of circle by using pi r square and 2 pi r. For the second time it is calculating area and perimeter of rectangle by using length into breadth and by 2 into l plus b. And for the third time it is calculating area of square by using side square and 4 into side. So this is how we perform dynamic and static polymorphism. That marks the end of this video. See you soon in the next video. Till then, thank you and take care.